Hello there, sword friends. Today I have another sword log vlog vlog type thing for you, mostly because I've been a little too busy. It's been polar vortexy and super snowy, and my wife has been watching one of those shows that makes you throw all your stuff away. It's like Marie could do something on Netflix that inspires a mass spring cleaning, even though we're pretty far from spring. Anyway, before the office gets gone through as a prime suspect and things get thrown away, I should tell you about some projects that I have going on and some updates and things like that, because. Really, that's what I have time to do right now. So first and foremost, Spicy Mike, or Mike Curley, as as I guess I've known him for years, uh, he made these for me. Mike, if you're not familiar, he is a guy that I've reviewed a chef's knife for, but he's a pretty talented blacksmith and makes all sorts of things. In a nutshell, uh, some time ago, I did a Naginata review for sword friend Corey, and, well, uh, it... it had left a little bit to be desired, and we decided to send it off to the man in black, or rather, I didn't, Corey did, because because it's his stuff, uh, and I have it custom mounted. He bought a set of fittings from Fred Lohman, but it missed the, was missing the Ishizuka, if I'm saying that correctly. And ever since I sent it off to the man in black to have mounted, we have been unable to find a, a well, a reasonably priced Ishizuka, if that's what it is, this butt, the shovel end of the weapon. Uh, so I asked Mike if he would oblige and make one, and he made two, uh, one with some forge scale, some patina on it, and the other without. So we will see if these will work. I don't know if they will. Mike didn't have the original fittings to go off of as a guide, but in any case, here is here is what I have. So we'll see. I'm going to send these off to the man in black, and hopefully we'll see see them on the end of an Aginata in the not too distant future. Uh, one interesting thing I thought I uh, well that I thought was interesting about the forging process is Mike did something to stick them together. I don't exactly know how it was welded or not, but he said he chucked them at the floor uh, on the concrete floor to see if they were durable or or good or not, which I which I thought was funny. Anyway, these are going to go after the man in black. You should see them on the end of a Naginata if they work. Anyway, I thought it was cool. The other update is on a James Raw Katana that I sent off to the man in black some time ago. It has landed on his bench, and the fittings that I sent, uh, well, I guess he was just more interested in these. I got a, this is a Suba, I believe, from Sword Store. Uh, not exactly sure what it is. And then I have some wave fittings from Fred Lohman and some lobster manuki in silver so i'm not exactly sure how these are all going to pan out anyway it should be interesting the man in black said he would prefer to use those as opposed to what i sent him so why argue with the artist i've also been fortunate as of late to receive some pretty cool odds and ends this is an older pond boss uh, from chris cutlery and i still have to send off the item that i traded it for but in a nutshell there's a pretty cool looking, oh, the blade's on the other side. Anyway, uh, I haven't played around with this, but it's weird and neat looking, and it was made by Chris Cutlery, so you can't really buy it anymore. This is one thing that I'm, I'm sometimes hesitant to review, uh, mostly from the standpoint that you can't, you can't buy one now if you wanted one, which is kind of defeats the purpose of a review, but uh, in any case, I might be able to do a little whacking with it and see, see how it holds up. This is another fun one that came to me for review. It is on loan from Sword Friend Ian. And in a nutshell, it is a, a Lanx Messer or a Long Messer or a big knife. Uh, this is from Land Connect, Lange Connect Emporium. I'm, I don't know how to say the name. I haven't really looked into it or researched it at all yet, but it's a big, big honkin' Messer, which I am going to do a little testing on. Now this one is also on loan and I am not going to break it, but I have permission to swing it around a little bit and to also show you some of its features and build quality and uh, I will I will do just that. Uh, it's an interesting piece in terms of coming with like a scabbard. Oftentimes I get a, a, uh, a blade like this and I don't have all of the pieces to really review the whole package, but here um, I've got some belts and I've got some other little bitty knives which overall are, I don't know, I don't know anything about these, so I am going to look at them though and hopefully learn in the process and I'm excited to do so. Now I also recently made a trade for this right here, this is not my first or my second, this is my third Albion Cressy, and honestly it's the first one that I've uh, I've liked. It's kind of a, a weird bit, they don't usually vary very much, but I would, I would say I haven't been really a big fan of the Cressy, maybe it's because my, my palette has expanded or my tastes have changed, or maybe it's just that this one is better. <laughs> Not exactly sure. In any case, uh, it has a kind of spiral wound grip, which is a little, little different, and I'll maybe be able to talk a little bit about the Cressy at some point. I also have this. Uh, I bought this somewhat recently, and it's still got some spluce on it, but it is a Skydrow blade, which is a little bit interesting. 
Um, it has some smaller Japanese style fittings on it. I actually happen to have a similar set of Fujikasha around uh, in the same pattern, which I guess is interesting. Uh, this is one of their kind of laminated Kobuse construction type swords, and anyway, it feels pretty refined. It's a, it's a fun sword and somewhat unique. Hopefully I can figure out what model it is or find out stuff. Anyway, have to research this one. I'm also particularly excited about this sword right here. This is a sword from Evolution Blades, or a Motohara sword, and uh, I got it second hand. Nevertheless, I'm actually pretty excited about reviewing it. This is one of their kind of lightweight matte cutters. It's extremely thin and light and maneuverable, and it is, uh, it demonstrates, well, for me, it's just something very different, something I haven't held in my hand. I haven't had a sword that felt really like this, at least not in this size. Uh, ever. So it's it's something different and that is inherently exciting. It's also made of a steel that I haven't haven't gotten a chance to play with and it's really 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 thin, especially for a sword of its size. So I am I'm really looking forward to seeing how this one works and cuts. I just haven't gotten to it because I don't imagine it's gonna cut snowmen. Uh, well at least that's not an effective test. Anyway, overall construction I would have to say that on the grand scale, looking at this sword knowing that they range for around fifteen hundred to three thousand dollars, I think this one would probably be along the, the more baseline, though I, I couldn't tell you for sure, I haven't researched it. Uh, the overall construction is really quite good and very impressive. Things are, are tight, the fittings are nice, uh, the parts seem quite good, and the geometry and all of that seems seems interesting. I can't really say more because I haven't had a chance to play with it or swing it at anything, but uh, I will say I'm excited to do so. Now, one thing I don't talk about extensively are knives, and why don't I do that? Well, there's a lot of channels that talk about knives and frankly do a better job and know more about them than I do. I feel like the way I can contribute to the broader conversation of swords and edged weapons on YouTube, or at least on the internet as a whole, is by sharing stuff that people don't generally talk about. I don't fancy myself a particular expert. I'm just an enthusiast, a guy that likes them, and so I share what I can. And given the lack of information about some of the things I talk about, I feel like it at least adds something to prospective buyers or people that are interested in the hobby. Knives, on the other hand, have a lot of people talking about them. And I don't know if I should, you know, make an attempt at maybe doing a review or talking about some. This is a Gen 2 Muso Bowie. I don't, I don't know if I'm even saying the, the name right. But anyway, it's a big, a big Bowie knife, and, uh, and it's cool looking. And you can't necessarily get it anymore, but I happen to have a few different knives that you can't necessarily get anymore, and maybe it'd be fun to, to see some of them. Maybe it wouldn't. If it would, let me know. Uh, maybe it, it'd be worth doing a, a quick and dirty review or something to that extent. Anyway, it's a big cool knife. Check it out. Last but perhaps not least is the Swords of the Northshire Katana. I have been doing just a little bit of this and that with it and doing Iaido and, and that kind of stuff, practicing with it. I actually haven't cut much of anything with it other than myself. You might be able to see there's a little bit of dried up blood there because, uh, well, I was practicing, it was cold, so I was doing it indoors at a place that's un uncomfortable, <laughs> given that I sit in this chair and pull swords out all the time, it shouldn't necessarily be that uncomfortable, but it's a very long blade, and well, anyway, I cut myself, that's the, that's the nitty gritty of it, and uh, yeah, so I guess the sword does cut, uh, but uh, I haven't gotten a chance to swing it at water bottles or anything like that, I've kind of just practiced doing, you know, general general EI with it as opposed to anything else. Uh, so when it warms up or when I have some space, I'm going to go and whack some stuff with it. Uh, overall though, so far, it's it's held up. It's Everything is still tight. I've been able to look it over and, you know, I have to say it's, it's growing on me. I really like that I got what I asked for. In retrospect, I probably would have asked for something different knowing how much I've actually practiced with it. Uh, I found some things that I don't, that I kind of knew were uncomfortable going in, uh, but chose to do anyway. Uh, but that's my stupid fault. Overall, they did give me what I asked for. So anyway, I am working on the review on this one. I just just haven't had a lot of chance to cut anything with it and film it. And uh, the weather is not, not being super helpful because it's not fun to cut wet things when it's 60 below zero. That's all I have. It's just been a quick update in terms of some of the projects and other stuff that I have to review. Uh, I'm excited to do a lot of this, and I hope that the weather or my attitude about the weather improves one or the other. Uh, in any case, I should have some videos in the not-too-distant future. I'm just trying to get my house in order a little bit, and it's taken more time given that I have a day job to fight with. So that's all I have for you. I hope it's been interesting. As always, cheers, and thanks for watching.